Evening, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, I will call the January 18th, 2022 meeting of the Harnett County Commissioners to order. Uh, welcome, everyone. Great, good to see a, a good crowd here tonight. And I got two special welcomes. Uh, welcome to Mr. Brent Trout, who will very shortly be sworn in as the new county manager. And we have with us tonight Mr. Stuart Kelly, Jr of Cub Scout Pack 713 uh, in Cameron, and he's going to come at this time and lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please stand. Commissioner Johnson, would you have the invocation, please? You stand with me and pray, please. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight as a, as a people together, and we have a lot of common interest, and we'd like to request at this time for a lot of prayers for the people all across the world who are still having problems with COVID, affecting an awful lot of people in Harnett County. We just pray for each one of those. Uh, Father, we, we pray for our military and our police officers across the country, across the world that are fighting and ending us all the time. We still have economic hardships. We ask for your help with those people, groups that are affected by that. Uh, we ask for your blessings for people of Hornet County, every one of us. We're all one giant family here. We just pray that you will come to our needs, the prayers, the unspoken needs that we don't like to talk about. And we thank you for the Cub Scout Pack 713 being able to come up and do the pledge. We just ask for your blessings and everything that we do in our county business tonight be acceptable to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner. And I failed to mention, but um, there were two more young men that were supposed to be here along with uh, uh, Mr. Kelly tonight, but they are victims of COVID, um, and uh, they are attempting to complete their building a better world adventure requirements for a badge, I guess, uh, is, is what they get. So we're glad to have you tonight. All right. Um, at this time, we will consider any additions or deletions to the published agenda. Anybody got anything they need to add or take off? <clears throat> Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? Uh, well, I have one thing, uh, item 4A. Um, we will have a proclamation at that point. Um, Do I hear a motion uh, to approve the agenda? Mr. Oh. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the agenda as amended. Yeah. We have a motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. At, um, at uh, this time, we will uh, do additions and deletions to the consent agenda. Any uh, additions or deletions to the consent agenda? Do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as published. Johnson seconds that. First. Motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. At this time, uh, we will have a proclamation. Mr. Wood, if you'll come forward, please, sir. This is a resolution by the Park County Board of Commissioners honoring George A. Wood for his service as interim county manager. Whereas George A. Wood began his career in local government administration in 1977 and has served the public for over 40 years as a city and county manager throughout 
North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Georgia. And whereas George has been an active member of his professional community by serving on the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners, Risk Management Board of Directors, and serving as a member of the State Library Board of North Carolina and the North Carolina City and County Management Association. And whereas George was appointed to serve as acting county manager for Hart County on May 17, 2021, and whereas George was sworn in as interim manager for Hart County on June 30, 2021, and whereas George has been a committed <coughs> and dedicated public service and has worked to promote the well being of the employees and citizens of Hart County, and whereas George has served his role as interim county manager with professionalism, integrity, humility, and compassion, and whereas George has made a lasting positive impact. Hart County and the state of North Carolina through his exceptional fiscal and management influence, and whereas through his leadership and expertise, Hart County has entered a new era of economic prosperity, and now therefore be it resolved that the Hart County Board of Commissioners does honor, hereby honor George A. Wood for his long and distinguished career in local government and for his leadership in Harney County. The Harney County Board of Commissioners hereby expresses its appreciation for his service to our community and wishes him a healthy and fulfilling retirement. Adopted this 18th day of January, 2022. And this proclamation is signed by all the uh, county commissioners. <laughs> All right, at this time we will move to item five on the agenda and we will have the swearing uh, in the administer oath of, oath of office to Mr. Trout. Several months ago, our Harney County Board of Commissioners, with the assistance of Interim County Manager George Wood, embarked on a fishing expedition, if you will, in search of a new Harney County Manager for our county. After a nationwide search and after a lot of hard work, this board comes before the county today with George to announce and to produce our new county manager, Brandon D. Trout. He was a prize catch, something we're proud of. And once he was named, after doing a little, a little research, I found that he was a very special species that can be classified as follows. He is a Midwest, flatland, White-headed, <laughs> large mouth, <laughs> Topeka, Brent D. Trout. <laughs> so to make this announcement official today and legal, of course, he's here to take his oath of office. Kelly, his wife, is here with him in support of him, as she should be. We'll hold him out for him. We'll place your left hand on the Bible as you've already done and raise your right hand. Are you ready to take your oath? Yes. Do you, Brent D. Trout, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States of America so that help you God? I will. Do you, Brent D. Trout, further solemnly swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina? to the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof, 
and that you will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution of the United States to the best of your knowledge and ability to help you God. I will. Do you, Frank D. Trout, fully further solemnly swear that as Harney County Manager, you will well and truly execute the duties of the Office of County Manager according to the best of your skill and ability, according to law, so help you God. I will. Congratulations. I'm glad Brent showed up tonight. This afternoon, for about six hours, our interim county manager sat down with him to give him the real scoop on Harvey County. <laughs> <laughs> and when he told me he'd be doing that, I didn't know whether Brent would show up tonight or not. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Snow, and again, welcome, Mr. Tr uh, Trout. We are glad to have you here. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. We've already approved the consent agenda, so I will move to item seven, the public comment period, a uh, period of 30 minutes. Uh, each speaker will be limited to three minutes. Um, and. Uh, I would remind people that this is an opportunity for the commissioners to hear what you have to say. Uh, we will not be entering into a discussion uh, during this period. Uh, if something needs to be referred to a, a department, we will do, th do that at this time. Um, so that being said, it's now 612, so at uh, 642, we will conclude this uh, period if we have people speaking. Uh, anyone wishing to speak, please come forward. Uh, when you come forward, please state your name and your address. Marvel DeAngelis, 652 Old Stage Road North, Phelps. I'm well, important to please do something about the homeless situation we have. We have thousands of people who are out in the cold, and it is. Look at how many below freezing days, below freezing nights we've had so far, and you know we've got more snow coming on the way. We have no homeless shelter in Harnett County, the place that's uh, in Dunn. They expect you to have a, they will not take you if you don't have a check. And they can take money from you. So, one thing that I've been thinking is that several of us have been thinking, we've got the commons, and nobody is there at night. And it's something that, you know, we can set up so that poor people, you know, homeless people can use that area, and they can, uh, you know, we can set it up for, for um, uh, beds, you know, for cots, or just sleeping bags. And then in the morning, by 8 o'clock, they'd be gone. The point, did, point being, though, they would have some place to go. And we are, this is the government of the people. These people need you more than anyone. So, and... You know, I, I presume, I didn't get here on time, but I presume you started out this meeting with a prayer, did you not? Despite the fact that Jesus says, you know, don't pray in public because God's not going to listen to that. But that, is, that all being aside, Jesus, whom you uh, pretend to pray to, he says that you are supposed to house the homeless, feed the hungry, and to nurse the sick. If you were to find your way to heaven, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I hope you will consider this. If you need help with any of it, there are organizations willing to help out 
with the uh, management of the situation. There's the Underground Railroad. It's run by Melanie Stewart. And there are several churches in Harnett County that would also be more than willing to help out with the management of this situation. If you want to pretend that you're Christian, act like it. Thank you. Good day. Thank you, ma'am. Um, hello. Um, my name is Tiffany Campbell, 8627 West Lillington. Um, I sent you today um, to let you know that we are having a, a leak step, which is my business, is having a sneaker ball, it's a family affair sneaker ball. I have sent all of you emails prior to this, probably a month or two ago, with no response, so I thought it would only be fitting for me to come to a meeting and personally invite you out to come to this event. Um, we are losing a lot of lives due to drug overdoses, gun violence, a lot of things, but I think that the main issue is that it needs to start at home. So the whole purpose behind my event is to bring parents and children out and, then, and to give them an, a, a night of fun, laughter, and kind of bring that family element back into play. Um, so it will be at Dreams Place, the Victory Time Natural Life Center on February the 19th at 5 p.m. Um, and I feel like the only thing that we can do, we can't change everything, but we can start somewhere. So I would look forward to someone coming out in a response to further emails and as we, as I continue to try to make change in the county that I was born and raised in, of course, after this event, all proceeds that are raised from this event will go back to help do the gun violence awareness event. I had one last June and it's gonna be annual as well. And I will have one this June. Um, so all proceeds will go to that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> What is the county doing to prepare? Um, I don't see our uh, director of emergency services here, um, but I, I know that they are getting ready. They uh, are, are preparing. Uh, we don't uh, we don't do roads, so we're not in the grinding the roads and that kind of thing. Um, but um, does, did, did, Brian, do you have an answer for this young man's question? Uh, yes, our emergency services department in the county is uh, keeping the monitoring the conditions from the state uh, every several hours. Actually, we got an email before this meeting tonight about what they're looking at over the weekend. I know DOD is working on the road aspect of everything, but we at the county level really try to coordinate with all the fire departments, all law enforcement, to make sure that we're prepared for storms when they come. So hopefully we are more prepared than we need to be. That's usually the goal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, hello, my name is Alan Longman. I'm at 234 Hamilton Road in Bonham. The reason for my talk tonight has to do with the camera system in the jails and run by, run by, some account, uh, run by the county itself. They usually were told by the you know, clerk of courts that the camera system was on, but it wasn't recording anything. We found out the truth was that the RT department, run by Ira Hall, is the one that keeps the control over the evidence. My wife has been hit by someone from the uh, one of the county employees which brought this on. And we tried to find out what the camera was which show in the information. When we went and got the information from the legal department, the form to fill out, and then the IT began to honor that form, which they partially did. But what happened was that the information of the incident was actually erased six minutes missing and when we asked the head if everybody else was helping us the head was not he did not give us the information we found out he was missing and uh, the point is if information our tapes our camera system inside the county can be awful in such a manner 
can be refused to give the evidence it's supposed to be granted. It's supposed to be continuous. That's what the order said. He denied if there was information, he would not give it. The legal department had to go down and ask him for it to go or tell him he better produce it. And that's what we finally got after the campaign. The point is, we have people dying in jail. We have all sorts of problems with, with personnel hitting people, violence, and deaths. And you can't rely on the evidence because it's being tampered with or maybe tampered with the DIT department. I have no faith at all in Ira Hill, who is the head of the department whatsoever. The case went to someone named Mike Peterson, who is the, who is the uh, I believe, is the professional standards. He turned around and he said he'll handle the case and do everything for it. So far, he hasn't produced a name for the individual that did that. And someone had to contact Ira or somebody in that department to have all of the information. I don't know who did that. I assume it could be either Robinson, Mr. Uh, Mike Robinson, or, or the sheriff, or someone did to protect the individual. But the point is, if we're going to have information on the cameras, and they're going to be made available to people, which it should be, if you're going to use this as evidence, it should be illegal to tamper with it. There should be nobody employed who has, and we have evidence that, that they did in fact tamper with it. All right, so the point is, they should not be in the office, they should not be uh, in the job of Mr. Trout, I guess. I agree he's the head of that type of thing, to investigate it. I also can't rely on the person who's supposed to be handling the cases against the sheriff's department or any other county worker, because he doesn't seem like he gets it at all. He turned around and made a personnel problem. He still hasn't given us the name of the individual who did this, what the record was. I didn't know I'd like to see something done about this. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Longman. Thank you for accepting. But you're here now. <laughs> and we appreciate you for 
for being here. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, we had other things to talk about, but I'm going to put all that in a nutshell. I think most of it was addressed by Senator Jim Burden, and I'm just telling you the laws and legislators, if we could take out the time to go and look and read what has been passed, what's coming into play, and how that can be beneficial for the particulars of Manage County, moving us forward as we're going with this um, housing development boom, it's not economic development, but housing development boom, um, what is going to need to be in place to gird us up so we're not just having urban sprawl, but we are attending to all the human beings that are coming through this county and what their needs are. I thank the board for their time, and hope you guys have a great day. Thank you, Ms. Longman. Hello. My name is Sheila Hill, 235 Shepherd Drive, Ranger. And I'm Stanley. I am a business owner here in Lake County, in Williamson. My business is a house of accounts, CBD dispensary. And I stand here on behalf of the Black Business Owners in Hunnett County. Over a year ago, <coughs> we just assembled a group of, of um, business owners to come together for one purpose. And our purpose is to uplift and empower Black business owners by combining our economic spending power. Our mission is to empower them with the resources needed to sustain a lucrative business while inspiring them to reach back and uplift their surrounding communities. Our goal is to inspire, enrich, and engage black business owners through business development and community en enhancement. We do have a website where we have a group, we have a Facebook group with over 100 black business owners, 90% being from Hyde County, some in surrounding, surrounding area. We do have a Facebook group I'm sorry, we have a website, harnetblackbusinesses.com. I'm sorry, harnetblackownedbusinesses.com. And we made this little pamphlet here, actually a little magazine. And I have one for each of you anytime that you not only just want to support us, but you want to invite us to the time where we need to talk about what the needs of the business owners in Harnett County is. We do have phone numbers, we have addresses, we have what type of business that we have in play. When it comes down to the American Rescue Act for the grants, we would like to be considered or be invited to the table to talk about how we can help be a part of that as well. And I would like to, is this okay, ask you all? Would yes, ma'am. It's okay? Sure. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And you, welcome to the county. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else?
with the enforcement behind it. And it's becoming increasingly difficult for advocates like myself to understand why some laws seem to matter more than others. Laws designed to protect animals should carry the same weight and level of enforcement as any other law designed to protect our most vulnerable populations. Our overworked system is failing, and not because of lack of effort, but because it's simply stretched far too thin. It's time to get ahead of this. We need to be proactive and not reactive. I'm here again with a call to action. Please support the urgent creation of a Citizens Animal Welfare Advisory Committee. Let us help with solutions. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no one come forward, I will close the public forum and we will move to item eight on the agenda. Uh, this is a uh, proposed zoning change. Uh, Mr. Locklear, you want to walk us through this? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The Development Services Department has a few cases tonight. The three, as you mentioned, we have two rezonings and one Texas one. Uh, the first rezoning case that we had tonight, the owner of the property is Dan Smith, who is also the applicant. Uh, the property is located at 42 Neil Smith Road and 1.30 acres. It's located in the Hector Street Township. Uh, the rezoning request is from RA30, which is Marshall. The site is currently occupied by one structure that currently houses the Kipling Post Office as well as the photography studio. The surrounding uses, uh, land uses, consist of undeveloped land, residential, and agricultural uses, and several uh, non residential uses. Uh, public water, a private septic tank, is currently being utilized at the site. The staff has evaluated uh, the, the, the site and found that the impact to the surrounding community is reasonable. There are several non-residential uses in the area, and any new development would incur site would include site development. Improvements, I'm sorry. The requested zoning to commercial is compatible with the land use classification of a rural center development node. These nodes are usually market-driven commercial centers with, with a small-scale non-residential <coughs> footprint of less than 50,000 square foot. The requested zoning would enhance and maintain the public health, safety, and general welfare due to the potential site improvements that could take place and due to the land use compatibility, uh, except for a street, uh, this would be con contiguous to commercially zoned property. The application does not need to be considered for small scale rezoning. Having said that, the suggested statement of <coughs> consistency uh, shall read, as stated in the evaluation, the requested rezoning to commercial would not have an unreasonable impact on the surrounding community and will maintain the public health, safety, and general welfare based on the existing non-residential uses in the area, as well as the compatibility with the county's land use plan. Therefore, it is recommended that this rezoning request be approved. Uh, this case was heard on January 3rd. Uh, by the Harney County Planning Board, and they voted unanimously uh, five to zero to recommend approval uh, of the application based on the compatibility with the land use plan and the existing non residential uses on site. Uh, they ha we had one citizen that night speaking, uh, it was a, who was also an adjacent property owner who spoke in opposition and referenced the increased traffic, noise, and discomfort of not knowing what type of business may be located beside her home. And that is it. I'm available for any questions. Anyone have questions for uh, Mr. Locklear? Okay. Thank you. Um, at this time, we will open up the public hearing. Uh, anyone wishing to speak for or against um, this rezoning, uh, please come forward. State your name and your address. My name is Dan Smith. I live at 132 Kipling Road in Kipling. I am one of the owners of this piece of property we're discussing, along with my brother. Um, we're just attempting to get this uh, 1.3 acres rezoned to um, from RA30. It's been RA30 for a, a while. I have no idea how it ever became RA30. But uh, this piece of property has been in our family for over 100 years. Um, it's never been used as residential property. It's always been used as non-residential property. Um, so it's, uh, I'm really not sure where it started as um, a residential piece of property, but it never has been. But currently, like 
like he said, it is uh, one of the businesses as a post office, uh, Kipling Post Office is there. And uh, my father's old photography studio building is still there. Uh, this building was built in 1919, so it's over 100 years old. It started out as a general merchandise store back in the day. Um, so we just really, at this point, we just like to get it properly zoned to a commercial. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else uh, wish to address this matter, either for or against? Seeing no one coming forward, I'm going to close the public hearing and ask the board if they have any questions or comments for this, uh, for Mr. Smith or Development Services. Well, since this is in my district, I'll make a motion that we approve this rezoning. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. Thank you. The next case tonight is also a rezoning request. Uh, the owner of the property is Cease 1995 Family Limited Partnership, which is also the applicant in the case. Uh, the property is 6.52 acres located on uh, 3607 Hodges Chapel Road, located in the Aversboro Township. The request is to rezone uh, from commercial to industrial. Currently, uh, the site is occupied by the applicant's business, which is a heavy truck shop and towing uh, facility, and uh, other, other items have been accumulating uh, due to their business on the site. Uh, several non-residential uses, as well as residential and agricultural uses exist as surrounding uses. Uh, public water is available. Private septic tank is currently being utilized. The site has evaluated uh, the site and found that um, staff has evaluated the site that the impact to the surrounding community is reasonable as there are several non-residential uses in the area uh, the requested zoning to compatible is compatible with the existing land use classification of employment mixed use the area is also within a compact mixed use development node uh, these two designations highlight growing areas of the county that could include locations for employment and economic development opportunities, as well as have access to major thoroughfares. Uh, the requested rezoning to industrial would maintain the public health, safety, and general welfare as the proposed zoning district will allow for similar uses that already exist. And then last, due to its size and since the parcel is adjacent to the same zoning district, this application does not need to be considered for small scale rezoning. Having said that, the suggested statement of consistency, uh, as stated in the evaluation, the requested rezoning to industrial would not have an unreasonable impact on the surrounding community based on the non-residential uses, current zoning districts in the area, as well as compliance with the county's land use plan. Therefore, it's recommended that this re rezoning request be approved. Uh, this case was also heard January 3rd by the planning board, and they were also voted unanimously 5-0 to recommend approval. Uh, based on the existing non-residential uses in the area, um, on site and in the area. Uh, no one spoke in opposition. I'm available for any questions. Any questions for staff? All right, at this time I will open up the public hearing. Uh, anyone that wishes to speak for or against this rezoning, please come forward, state your name and your address. My name is Peter Ashenden, address is 3607 Hodges Chapel Road in Dunn, North Carolina. We're the current tenants and come July we'll be purchasing it. Um, when we moved in, it was a previous truck shop, so we were unaware of what we were doing would be not compliant with zoning. We are asking that you guys allow us to do this. We are a towing company and an emergency response team. 95 is currently under construction from exit 55 up to 84. We are the tow company for the state of North Carolina. We've got a contract with DOT and that is what we do 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We keep trucks on 95 with very strict time limits um, to allow accidents to get cleared very quickly. 87% uh, of fatality accidents are due from secondary accidents where people are sitting in a traffic queue from the original accident and then somebody not paying attention runs into the back of them. 
is something that we see all the time, which is why the state has done a contract to allow us to do that. The other thing that we do there is we train with fire departments. Um, Raleigh, Cary, Mooresville, Apex, the Dunn Fire Department have all been on our site. So we do have cars that are cut up there. And the reason that the cars that are there that are cut up are strictly for fire department training. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else uh, wish to speak for or against this rezoning? Seeing no one uh, move to come forward, I will close the public hearing. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? Do I hear a motion uh, concerning this matter? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Johnson, I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, zoning request for plan 21-12-0003. Have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. Almost at the. All right. The last case tonight is a text amendment uh, request. Uh, the applicant in this case is Harnett County Development Services. Uh, we are looking to revise the UDO or the Unified Development Ordinance for the county, uh, specifically Articles, Article 6, Section 6.5, uh, that deals with. Uh, display of an address for uh, fire marshals. This, this request came to us from the fire marshal's office. It may be easier for to tell you what it is. And it's they've had a change in the state fire code, and so we need to adjust our ordinance to, to, to be in line with, with the state fire code. So essentially all this is doing is the, the height of a street address number displayed on multifamily uh, dwellings and non-residential structures shall be a minimum of, it's currently five five inches and it would move to six inches so that is what the request is for uh, the suggested statement of consistency uh, shall read the requested text amendment is compatible with the Harnett County regulatory documents as well as the National Fire Protection Association regulations therefore is recommended that the text amendment request be approved uh, this was also heard January 3rd at the Harnett County Planning Board that voted 5-0 to recommend approval and uh, based on the compliance with the National Fire Protection Association regulations. No one spoke in opposition. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Locklear. Any questions for staff on concerning this matter? All right. At uh, this time, I will open the public hearing. Uh, anyone wishing to speak for or against this uh, uh, proposed change, please come forward, state your name and address. Seeing no one move to come forward, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, do I hear a motion concerning this matter from the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve uh, this uh, text amendment to the Harnett County. Second. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. All right. Um, next is the uh, discussion of the board's legislative priorities for fiscal year 2022. Thank you, sir. Mr. Haney, I believe you're up. Good evening. I am back before you uh, to finalize, work towards finalizing the uh, board's 2022 legislative priorities. Uh, last week, I presented you with uh, the priorities from this past year and following board comment and input from our departments, I made revisions accordingly um, and have attached the revised copy in your packet. Uh, I will go over briefly the, the revisions that were made, there were a couple of other revisions that have been made uh, due to comment that I've received since uh, putting this in the packet. Uh, under the first priority, assist the county in expanding broadband access to underserved areas. This priority has been updated to reflect the need for additional legislative flexibility and support. At the, 
on the top of page two, um, per board uh, comment, I have relocated the uh, priority to assist with efforts to expand natural gas capacity into the under the economic development heading. Uh, below that, under Harnett Regional Jet Port, um, I have made updates to that priority to reflect the additional needs beyond uh, support for the terminal project, which has received some funding from the legislature, as well as the current ongoing projects. Um, also, uh, you can see in red um, that uh, I've changed the, uh, the desired length of the runway to 5,500 feet. Uh, next, under transportation, under support four lane highways into Wake County, I have added an update on where the current project with the, uh, the Andrew Bypass stands, uh, as well as making some edits to, uh, to also expand uh, 55 from Jicarilla Lane to Five Points. Uh, in Fuquay Varina, as well as south going from the town of Coates to US 421 in Irwin. I've also added uh, on the third page, uh, provide assistance to modernize rural, rural roads to accommodate farm equipment uh, with language from the board uh, presented during last week's meeting, as well as checking with our cooperative extension and uh, soil and water directors. Uh, Below that, I have removed the uh, education heading as well as the, pay, uh, the lottery payout priority. Per the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners, this priority has been addressed uh, through funding from the General Assembly uh, that equaled 49%, um, which was above the board's re initial request from last year of 40%, as well as improving the needs-based public school capital fund to eliminate the five-year forfeiture of allocations if a county elects to receive a grant from the fund. I've also uh, updated the priority to appropriate full funding for the Federal Impact Aid Program uh, following comments from uh, NAFIS, which is the National, well, the National Association of Federally Impacted Schools. Um, they're kind of a national leader on this front. Uh, there is some legislation that has been introduced in the U.S. House that they have requested support for from our federal legislators. Uh, additionally, um, I have replaced the uh, priority from the Harnett County Health Department uh, related to funding preservation uh, to a priority related to communicable disease funding. This was funding that the health department and actually all health departments in North Carolina are receiving from the General Assembly for the next two years. However, that funding will expire at the end of two years um, to do additional communicable disease tracing. Um, our health director is concerned that uh, additional funding will be needed to keep that program going beyond that two year period. Uh, additionally, I have removed a priority related to assistance with uh, firefighters who contract diseases in the line of duty that uh, bill was passed by the General Assembly to address that. Um, I've also removed the uh, Veterans Treatment Court funding priority as funding was provided by the General Assembly in the budget to address that priority. I've also removed the uh, priority requesting uh, additional library state aid funding um, as there have been some changes to the funding this year and an increase in support for the NC Kids Digital Library. And then the final priority on the end of page five, I've um, added a priority from DSS uh, requesting the preservation of federal and state block grants for county administered DSS programs. With that, uh, are there any questions or anything specific you would like to, to discuss related to these priorities? May I speak? Yes, ma'am. Brian, I thought that we uh, were targeting our priorities. So, which of these are five priorities? So, last year when these were presented to our legislators, there were, uh, I think there were eight priorities under five separate headings. Those were broadband, economic development, uh, the jet port, transportation, and education. Uh, at this point, we've removed the education heading because that priority was removed. So, there are now four headings uh, with one, two, three. with nine priorities underneath those. So my, 
I would ask the board um, for your prioritization of these priorities. Are there any that you would like to, would you like to prioritize this differently? Um, are there fewer or more that you would like to, to bring to the top? And, and certainly given that I'm presenting you with this um, revised version, if you would like to take the week to look at this and then come up with your prioritization at the, the work session, uh, upcoming work session on February 1st, then that's certainly amenable. Um, I agree with you saying, but all of these issues are important for Hunt County. And we need funding for all of these. But we are prioritized when we go to the legislation, the legislation comes from the luncheon and all. We're going to discuss all of these, but I would like to see us prioritize at least three to five of these uh, these issues here. Because if we don't prioritize, they certainly are not. So if I'm in order, I'm asking the board for us to look at this and select the, the, the prioritize the, at least four, no, three to five that we uh, will present to them, but not leave out the other ones because they are all very important. But I, I would love to see that we target the ones that we that's an urgent need for Honey County. That's, maybe that's the best way to put it. You're you're absolutely correct, uh, Commissioner McCoy. That's exactly what uh, the legislators have asked us to do for them is to to give them our top. They said three. I think you know if we stretch it to five, we might can get by with it, but. Uh, uh, I agree with you. I would uh, like to recommend, if it's agreeable with everyone else, that we take these home and review them, study them, think about them, whatever, uh, however you want to come up with your three to five, and bring this, bring them back, and let's discuss them on uh, February 1st at our next work session. I agree. Should I make a motion? Uh, yes, ma'am. You can make a motion. I make a motion. Uh, excuse me. I would make a motion that we, as the, all the commissioners, take these home and look at them and uh, sort out the ones that we want to prioritize ourselves and come back and present them to you so we can present them in order when we have our luncheon with the legislators. That's my motion. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second. I will say, uh, while we can't have a conference call legally, um, we'll get in all kinds of trouble if we have conference calls with more than two of us talking. Uh, there's nothing uh, nothing wrong with us uh, talking one-on-one -on -one, uh, to discuss these, and, and uh, I think that might be a good idea to, uh, uh, that way we can, uh, you know, I might like one thing, and Commissioner Johnson might like something else, and he might convince me that his idea is better than mine. Uh, just throwing that out uh, for my two cents worth. Um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carried. All right, we will put this on our February 1st work session. Okay, and once those are prioritized, we will uh, assemble them in a presentable format and go ahead and send them to our legislators in advance of, of the legislative luncheon. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, moving to item 12, uh, Mr. Trout, the uh, county manager's report. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> um, it's pretty simple. Um, the reports were presented for you, both the amendments and the two reports. And so they're available for your reading. Uh, my comments would center around the fact I'm excited to finally be here. It's been great to meet you. The reception's been amazing. And I'm really looking forward to digging into the various issues that we have. I had an excellent meeting today with George Wood, Ryan Haney, and uh, Coley. And so excited to really dig into the issues that they presented to me today and get to work for you. Well, again, we're, we're glad to have you. We look forward to working with you. All right, any new business to come before the board? 
we do not have need for a closed session tonight, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? I didn't think so. <laughs>